Spring's gonna be great! The spring anime season's about two weeks away now, and after seeing what it has in store for us, oh man am I excited. A load of strong and not so strong anime are coming back, whether in the form of sequels, prequels, or whatever the new ranking of kings supposed to be, but either way, I'm here for it. And it's not just the returning anime that's got me excited. After a fun but somewhat mid-winter season, this spring's looking like it's going to kick things into top gear. With a bunch of highly anticipated anime airing, and after watching a trailer for every anime this upcoming season, and yes, this time it's the truth, I watched every anime this season, and here's my top 10. I can say with full confidence that this spring season is going to be one to remember, especially since we have a bunch of more isekai this season. Okay, enough joking around. It's time to see the top anime to watch this season and predict what's going to be my number one. Let's go! But. Before I go into my most anticipated anime of the season, there's just something I've gotta get out of my chest. I call this segment, How Did It Get A New Season? And it consists of only one anime, and if you're an OG fan of the channel, then you probably know what it's going to be. I mentioned it before in my love letter to Isekai video, by the way, don't watch it, it's cringe. But I seriously can't believe that in another world with my smartphone is getting a new season. Seriously, how? Did anyone really like this enough for it to get a new season? It was one of the most meh isekais I've watched that caters to a certain demographic, and even that it doesn't do well. In case you don't know what it's about, it's basically exactly as the title says. Toyo resurrects in a different world with his smartphone that magically works just like it would in our world, and stumbles along the way while somehow building a harem. Of course, he's also got an abundance of mana and can use every magic spell in the book, but the main gimmick's his smartphone. I seriously don't know who likes this show, and if you're a fan, then more power to you, but to me, this shows a skip. There are a bunch of much better isekais out there, and this one's just not worth your time or mobile data. Get ready for more bad jokes. Now, let's get back to the point of the video. To see the best upcoming anime, and this season's got a bunch of must-watch sequels, starting with Tonikawa, Over the Moon for You. If you're a fan of romance dramas, then this show's definitely not for you. But if you enjoy a simple, cute, wholesome romance story, then definitely give it a watch. The first season of Tonikawa was basically my comfort food in 2020, and I'm glad that it's getting a second season. Tonikawa is about Nasa Yuzaki, an honor student who ranks first in the national mock exams, but when his eyes fall on peerless beauty, he tries to approach her only to get to meet Truck-kun. But this time, Truck-kun failed. Tsukasa saves him, and as she walks away, he follows her, despite his injuries, and asks her out, and she accepts, but under one condition. They can only be together if he marries her. I know that Tonikawa might be pandering somewhat to its fans, but it's one of the best laid-back romance stories in recent memory, and if season 2 continues in the same way, then Tonikawa shouldn't be missed. Sticking with sequels, well, it's actually a prequel, but Konosuba's back! One of the funniest modern anime returns with Konosuba and on this wonderful world. It takes place one year before Kazuma and Aqua hit the scene, and this time, we follow Megumin the greatest genius of the Crimson Magic Clan, and their pursuit of mastering the ultimate offensive magic... I think we also got to know the reason behind Megumin's obsession with... However, on a routine trip to the woods, Koneko, who is Megumin's little sister by the way, finds a black kitten, but little does she know the role that kitten plays in unsealing a dark god's tomb. If you've been watching anime for a while and haven't seen Konosuba yet, then I highly recommend it. If you're new to anime, however, then I recommend waiting on it for a while. It's not one of the best for beginners, but it's one of the funniest anime out there, and one of the rare ones that actually made me laugh out loud. Trust me, it isn't easy to do that with anime, but Konosuba achieves it, and that's why it's one of my all-time favorites, and seeing it return, even if it's a prequel, it's going to be a must-watch for me. Before we get out of the sequels, there's one more that I must talk about, and yes, it's the obvious one. Demon Slayer. I'm going to make a bold prediction here. Demon Slayer is going to be the best animated show of the season. I know. Bold. I don't think I need to explain what Demon Slayer is, and if I did that, then that's only for increasing the runtime of the video. Actually, that's not a bad idea. The same reason I put that joke in here. Demon Slayer follows Tanjiro Kamado, a teenage boy whose entire family was brutally murdered while he was away selling coal. 
the only surviving member of his family is Nezuko, his younger sister, but she got turned into a demon. So, in order to rid the world of monsters and hopefully restore Nezuko's humanity, Tanjiro trains for years to become a demon slayer and protect those who can't fight for themselves. Demon Slayer is one of the biggest, if not the biggest anime in recent years, and it's for good reason. And a year after the end of the Entertainment District arc, and one of the best fight scenes I've ever seen, it's back. And you can expect it's going to be epic. There are a bunch of other sequels coming this spring season, but I'm either not caught up or haven't even started them. So instead, here's a list of the remaining ones. <coughs> Although, it's not just sequels that are present in loads this season, Isekai continues its run of overtaking anime with 6 shows this season. I mean the new ones only, not sequels. And of course, some of them will probably turn out to be generic, if not all. But, I love Isekai, so I'm going to watch them all. Probably. But, if I had to pick just one, it'll be my one hit kill sister. But that's because I expect it'll either be hilarious, or it'll be a dumpster fire. And either way, I'm here for the ride. Do you remember the mother isekai? Well, it's basically that, but with the main character's big sister. Asahi, a boy that loves video games, is killed in a traffic accident. Of course he is. And ends up in another world, and as he tries to enjoy the other world, he's chased by a monster. But then, he hears Maya, his older sister who followed him into the other world. I don't know how exactly she followed him, and I don't want to think about it. However, unlike Asahi, she becomes seriously OP, and thus begins the story of an overpowered older sister with a brother complex, because of course she has one, and her weak younger brother. Okay, a change to my previous prediction. It's definitely going to be trash. But I also feel that it's going to be an entertaining dumpster fire. Otaku Elf isn't an isekai, but it's got the vibes of a reverse isekai, and it's pretty obvious why. We follow Koito Kogane, who works as a teenage shrine maiden at the Takamimi Shrine, catering to the whims of its resident Elda, a centuries-old elf who loves video games as much as she hates going outside. My type of elf. However, Elda still has duties to attend to, and Kogane is bound and determined to make the otaku elf fulfill them. Otaku elf will probably be one of those anime that you watch, and as soon as it's over, you forget about it. Or at least, that's what it feels like to me, but it also seems like it'll be a fun distraction. I'm just curious about its premise of how an elf came to be a shrine resident, and it just looks like it might be the fun, wholesome slice of life this season. I honestly hope it turns out better than I expect, but it's not the only wholesome slice of life this season. Insomniacs After School is the other one, and it gives off the wholesome vibe even more than Otaku Elf. Ganta Nakami is a high school student who suffers from insomnia, but it turns out he's not alone. One day, he meets Isaki Magari, a girl with the same condition, and from there, a strange and special relationship forms as they share a secret and catch up on their sleep in the school's abandoned observatory. If Otaku Elf is the comedy wholesome slice of life, Insomniacs After School is the romantic wholesome one. Honestly, the synopsis alone didn't convince me, but after I watched the trailer, I can just sense that I'm going to love this show. However, I've been wrong a lot in the past, so I'm going to be cautious about it. But I do like the concept of them having insomnia and keeping it a secret from others. I just hope I'm right about it. Since we're on the subject of romance, this spring doesn't seem like it's going to be as heavy on the genre as the winter was, but that doesn't mean that there aren't any. For me, I've got three I'm looking forward to, and that's not taking Tonikawa into account. And the first one of them is The Dangers in My Heart. Kyotaro is fascinated by murder and all things macabre. Basically, he has a dark heart, until he has an encounter with the school's idol Anna Yamada, who sparks a light in his heart. In short, it's a classic love story of an anti-social kid and a popular kid that kind of takes it to the extreme. But I do like a nice romance anime that brings out the hidden sides of the duo, and it seems it's going to do just that, even if Kyotaro's interests are twisted. The other romance anime is Loving Yamada at level 999, the rom-com of the season. After being dumped, Akane is just about to quit the game she used to play with her boyfriend when she meets Yamada in the game. He's somewhat of a legend in real life, but there's one problem. Yamada's only interested in the game. Its premise is somewhat similar to Tomozaki-kun, which basically has the same concept, but I do like it, even if because I wanted the same thing to happen to me as a kid. <laughs> However, there's one thing I should mention. It's animated by Studio Madhouse, and even if recently they haven't been as successful, 
they're still one of the juggernaut studios in the industry, and just a show being animated by them deserves a chance. The final romance anime in this list is A Galaxy Next Door, which might give Tonikawa a run for its money. Ichiro Kuga has struggled to support his younger siblings ever since his father died on nothing but a small inheritance and drawing manga, but as it's harder to keep up with his responsibilities and deadline after his assistants quit to follow their dreams, Shiori Goshiki applies to be his new assistant, but there's something otherworldly about her. And after she declares that she and Kuga are engaged, his world turns upside down. The premise is very similar to Tonikawa, and that's not a bad thing. It's tagged as a comedy romance, so I can expect that it'll give me the same vibe as Tonikawa, but its challenge is going to be to surpass it. And if it does that, then we've got a winner in our hands. Now, it's time for my top 3 most anticipated new anime of the season. All of the previous anime mentioned are not ranked by the way, but the next 3 are the ones that really caught my eye and I can't wait for them to start. Coming in at 3rd is Heavenly Delusion. What was once Tokyo is divided into 2 parts, within the walls where it's safe, where youths are raised in a nursery style setting by robots, and while life may seem stale, the children are full of potential and curiosity. In many ways, it's a slice of heaven. Outside the walls is a hellscape, a world devoid of anything mechanical and now inhabited by bizarre yet powerful supernatural beings. We follow Maru with the aid of Kiroko crisscrossing Tokyo in search of heaven, but after searching for so long, maybe heaven is an unattainable dream. Before the making of this video, I had no idea what heavenly delusion was, but after watching the trailer, it's just… wow. All I can say is that I'm very hyped, but there's just one problem. It's a Disney Plus exclusive, which means its availability is going to be a problem. Even though I really hope that it doesn't fly under people's radars, unfortunately, it seems that Heavenly Delusion will follow the same fate of summertime rendering, a hidden gem. Second, we have Mashal, and from the looks of it, it's going to be one of the most fun anime this spring season. Mashal's a world of magic where it's casually used by everyone. Well, everyone except our protagonist, Mash Burn Dead, who despite not being able to use magic, he single-mindedly works out, but after people suddenly try to kill him, he's somehow enrolled in magic school, where we'll find out who wins, magic or muscle. The synopsis may be all over the place, but Mashal is one of the few anime I actually know about before this season, and trust me, that's a rare occurrence for me, even though I didn't read the manga. But now, I finally get to experience it, and just judging from its trailers, I can tell that it's going to be very fun. Based on first impressions alone, Mashal's probably gonna turn out to be my second most favorite anime this season, just losing out to this next one. I think it's obvious what number one is. It's the other anime I actually know about before the season, and it's also going to be my first experience of it, just like Mashal. Oshinoko is my number one most anticipated anime of spring, and that fact was decided ever since it was announced. Ai Hoshino's a young, talented, and beautiful idol who's adored by her fans, and is basically the personification of purity. But all that glitters is not gold. Goro Amamiya is a countryside gynecologist and a big fan of Ai, so when she appears pregnant at his clinic, he's beyond bewildered but promises her a safe delivery. However, he dies on the eve of her due date, or so he thought. Opening up his eyes in the lap of his beloved idol, Goro finds out he's reborn as her child. He then soon learns that the world of showbiz is paved with thorns, where talent does not always beget success. Now, he tries to protect her smile and help her rise to the top of the charts. This is probably the longest synopsis of the video, but it's worth it. Oshinoko's two trailers give off vastly different vibes to the show. One that makes me feel like the show is going to emotionally wreck me, and the other makes me feel like it's going to be a comedy. But judging from the outside, it's going to be anything but a comedy. Either way, I'm very excited for it, and if it meets my expectations, then it's going to be my number one favorite anime this season, hands down. I just hope this sentence ages well. And that's my list. And you may wonder why there aren't any ecchi anime on it. Well, Ramadan's almost here, so I honestly can't recommend ecchi anime in good conscience, and it's probably why I'm going to wait to make my spring season guide video. But even without the ecchi and harem anime, this season has more than enough to offer. After what felt like a somewhat slow winter, spring seems like it's going to turn it up a notch and I think it's going to be a great season. Thank you guys for watching, and as per usual, leave a like and subscribe, and tell me what's your most anticipated anime this season. And now, 
This has been Anio, and until next time, matane.